All right, this is all about um, ways we can study the, the brain and how scientists know uh, the various things that the brain is doing, how we think we know them. Uh, it, it's an awkward organ really to, to study. You can't tell a whole lot just from looking at it sitting there. You can't see muscles, for example, and think, oh, that, that does this, or valves and spaces and all sorts. Uh, it's a difficult organ to see. So a lot of the information we have about the brain is actually quite recent. We look, first of all, at what's called a couple of non-invasive methods. This basically means being able to study the brain without having to do surgery. Now the one that's um, mentioned in your textbooks is something called functional MRNI, magnetic resonance imaging. You just need to know it as fMRI, or if you put MRI, you'd probably be fine with that. Um, this is the one that gives you um, these nice kind of coloured pictures of the brain. It's not really the brain, but you, you get the idea. And various bits of light up when... Uh, they become active. The way this works is these are the ones where you have a big tube and basically uh, the patient would be on a kind of trolley whatever it is and they would go into uh, that tunnel they have to lay very still. What's going on in here is you have a very very large magnetic field and what it will do is it will look at your brain for areas where the most blood is going now, it's, it's quite complicated how it does it. I mean, it's worth it's interesting to look up, I suppose, but you don't need to know how it does it. But it works with magne ma magnetic fields and detecting which areas of the brain are more active by seeing which one um, the most blood is going to. Now, they're not really very dangerous at all. Um, they're very low risk. They're not using, for example, ionising radiation. It's not like an X-ray. Um, so don't say here that there's a risk that they can cause cancers and so on. The risk is, is, is so low that effectively we can ignore it. Um, there is potentially risk for people who have things like a pacemaker fitted, for example, which may have metal parts. So anything that's metal um, would be a problem. Or if somebody had, I don't know, metal pins in um, bones and things, that, would, that may be affected by it. But normally someone who's not got any of these things, it's not a problem. Um, so that's the one that's mentioned in the book, and I'm just going to mention another couple, um, perhaps worth mentioning. It's been called a CAT scan, and this is basically using X-rays. And yes, there's a risk here, but there's a, the, the same kind of risk as you'd normally expect with an X-ray machine. These are the ones that um, can give you a kind of slice by slice picture of a brain or an organ it's basically like doing an x-ray so if you wanted to look at a particular area of the brain it doesn't show you what it's doing in in real time it can only take um, pictures just like an x-ray really it's, it's like a still picture of it but you can build up 3d pictures with them and they're pretty useful if you're looking for certain things if you're looking for example for um, tumors in the brain um, they could show up on cat scans there's another one called a pet scan uh, and these are pretty cool. They use um, ends up using antimatter, <laughs> weirdly enough. Um, and these again would give you a, a picture of the brain that would kind of light up in different regions um, if it was some bits were more active than others. Uh, again, it relies on the idea that active part when a part of your brain becomes active, you get more blood flowing there because you need more glucose and so on. Uh, these ones actually do have a bigger risk. You you're exposed to quite a bit of radiation here. Um, and so they wouldn't be used unless there was a good medical reason. They're still used, of course, but you'd need to have quite a good medical reason. You, you wouldn't just go in and have one of these done for, for fun. Okay. So these techniques can be used to, to study the brain. The fMRI uses the magnetism. Pretty low risk. Areas of the brain that are active would light up. Uh, there's actually a couple of companies in America um, who are using this area at the moment to try and make... Um, things like lie detectors to see if there are certain areas of your brain that light up when you're telling lies. This potentially is one of the ethical issues. There was a question in one of the papers about ethical issues of this kind of stuff. Um, an ethical issue would be, you know, would it be possible in the future to use this to, to look in people's minds and read thoughts? Now it's a long way off and it's still very, very science fictiony and it probably wouldn't ever happen, but it is a potential issue. It's all about the right for people to... Um, not have their, their brain patterns monitored if you like that is an ethical issue another ethical issue with these is um you know on the positive side it allows um allows us to detect potential problems with the brain 
things that have gone wrong damage the brain without having to um, go through things like surgery and so on. Other techniques of finding out how the brain works, well, if people have had diseases um, after death, you can do an autopsy, look at the brain. If certain areas have been damaged or are smaller than we would expect them to be in comparison to healthy brains, we might then be able to say, oh, well, that area of the brain perhaps is connected to um, whatever the condition was. If it was, uh, in the case of something like Alzheimer's, for example, um, early work was done there where they noticed that certain areas of the brain um, had become damaged in the autopsy. Um, we, we, we suspected that those parts of the brain were to do with memory. So that's how we can we'd tell certain things. Um, physical damage, so what we might call trauma. So this might be if somebody's in an accident and a certain part of the, the, the head is struck and then they lost, for example, the, uh, the ability to do, uh, to, to, for example, to speak. We might then say, oh, well, a blow to this area of the brain, the patient can no longer speak. It seems fair to say that some part of the brain around here might be to do with speech, for example. Things like strokes as well, which of course would, would lead back to this idea of doing things like CAT scans and um, MRIs. We could see if areas of the brain were not functioning anymore. So trauma to the brain. We can also use um, invasive techniques, which would mean things like um, surgery. So actually looking inside the brain. Remember, the, the brain itself doesn't have um, pain neurons, um, although it's no excuse to go sort of poking your fingers in someone's brain. Um, we can use electrical stimulation. and We can see what happens to patients when they're stimulated in these ways. Um, even when they're awake, in the case of open brain surgery, you can stimulate a certain area of the brain. The person might, for example, say that they're experiencing a smell or a certain memory or certain visual things. And so we can map the brain out in that way. Um, and some of the, the more severe, I suppose, invasive techniques were um, things that were done, for example, on... Um, patients in the past were they, they were severely epileptic one of the things that was done was to uh, the brain of course is in too hard so if we're looking down the top of the brain like this to slice through this part which is called the corpus callosum slicing through there um, and it was found that the brain then lost the ability to communicate between both sides and so it was realized that certain sides of the brain um, had certain roles and that normally in a healthy brain those areas were, were connected to each other and were able to um, to cooperate and work together. When this part was cut, they couldn't anymore and, and patients lost the ability to do certain um, tasks. So that's an interesting thing if you want to have a look at it. Some interesting experiments called corpus callosum. And what happens when that's sliced? So we can look at it from the, the outside using the scans and so on. Remember this one, the fMRI. And the other one, uh, things like diseases and trauma autopsies of, of, of brains that have been damaged and also surgery um, and some of the invasive techniques using electricity.